So this will be the last part, um, part three hopefully, where I'm taking this you know, plum Dayton pattern and we're going to be hanging it on the handle that I'll thin down. Yeah, like I've said in the other video, it's a 28 inch house hickory handle, um, house handles, hickory handle. Uh, they're thinned down and shaped up, so watch the previous two videos if you're, you're curious as to how we got to this point. Um, I've got a couple of wedges selected here. Um, this one's Black Locust, uh, which I've used for wedges before. You can see we've got the yeah, growth rings running this way. Um, this is a piece of spalted maple. Um, I really do like using maple for the wedges. It seems to have good compression, but also durable enough that you can really drive it down into that handle um, and into the head without it splitting and shattering. I mean, it holds it together really well. Um, I've had good luck with it. I really haven't had much good luck with the poplar wedges that come with the handles. Um, your mileage might vary, uh, but I haven't had good luck with them, um, so I usually tend to lean towards um, maple, which we've got plenty of here. Um, so, yeah, and I think the, the spalted maple adds a nice, interesting, uh, interesting touch to it too. You can see that, that interesting color and grain. Obviously, we're only going to see the top bit of it here once it's actually in there and trimmed flush. But uh, yeah, I think it adds a nice little touch. Um, the locust one's a little bit thicker, um, so we'll see. When I fit the, the handle into the head, there really isn't too much room that we're going to need to take up. Um, doesn't really need to be a real fat wedge. So I'll probably go with the um, the maple. It also is my, my favorite wedge material. For now, at least. Um, so. Now when I hang, um, hang my heads, I don't use any glue. Um, the, there's been a number of scenarios where I've been very thankful for that. Uh, one, the wedge just completely doesn't want to cooperate. It, it splinters apart without getting good compression. Uh, you know, it's the way the eyes, the handles filling up the eye is just real kind of odd and I'm just not happy with it. And because of that, I'm not under a time clock in order to get that wedge back out before that glue sets up. Um, a couple other scenarios is you've got, you know, older hangs where I'm just not as happy with it anymore. Um, ones that I'd done a long time ago and it's just not quite up to what I'd want to do now. Um, and in those scenarios I've pulled wedges and reseated them and been you know, happy that I had included them. And apart from when I really first started hanging them and I'd been using wedges that were way too wide for whatever the kerf was or sort of the gap I was trying to fill and I wasn't getting good depth within the eye. Um, back then I'd had the wedges walk out a little bit, but since then I really haven't had any problems um, with that. Fingers crossed. So, If you like putting glue in there, by all means, that's, you know, that's a perfectly fine, fine thing to do. I just prefer not to, so whatever works for you. So once we get it in there, we're going to use our little leather protective cap, set this end on the concrete, and then I use, I think it's called a drilling hammer, um, I think it's three or four pounds, three pounds it looks like, it's an old craftsman, um, and I really drive that wedge in there. Um, I like to see the wood you know, mushering out if it splits, especially with the growth rings running the way it is, sometimes half of the wood will, the wedge will split. That half will drive in down and further, the other half won't as much. I, I think that's another reason why I like the grain running in the, this, you know, this kind of direction. And this is actually the same direction too, it's just harder to see with that, that spalting. Um, so if that wedge does break apart, um, parts of it will still drive in further to get good compression within that whole eye. So, yeah. we'll line it up, see how much of that wedge we need to take off. Because um, there's that little hole there, I'll probably take you know, this portion of the wedge off just so it fits in the eye a little better. And, uh, see where we get.
So you can see that I've shaped the front edges, the leading edges of that wedge to fit the inside of that eye. It doesn't need to be perfect. As you drive this in, you will get better compression. Um, and that wood will, wood will take the shape of the eye. Um, as you can see, little no force we're in. You know, I have to, two thirds of the way. I think with driving it, we'll be right where I want it. Um, the wedge is slightly tapered in, you know, that direction. So, as we fit it in, we'll try to get it centered, and then just drive it in straight, which can be challenging sometimes. Again, that's one of the reasons why I don't like using the glue, so that way if I do need to drive it out, go with another wedge, I'm not so committed into having to drill it out and try to clean up that eye on a, a handle we just spent a lot of time on. If you like using the glue, by all means, go ahead. Well, we're about ready. Clean it up just a little bit more with this pile. Or... So one of the other things you can see here is, just focus, um, our curve isn't down as far as I'd like. Because right now, if we've got a wedge going in, you know, three quarters of the eye, our wedge is going to bottom out before we actually reach the, you know, full compression. You know, our curve isn't deep enough. Um, so I'll chuck this up and in the vise and probably cut it to about there again you can see that's right about where the top of the head's going to go and you want let me say the general rule of thumb is anywhere from you know two-thirds to probably three-quarters um, depth full depth of your eye for the for the curve so that'll take me right about right about there so a little bit of ways to go and what I like using for for cutting the kerf is actually a wood blade or like a pruning blade just in one of these little um, handles and I, I think it works really well the aggressive teeth get through the hickory well um, you don't really care about the finish on the inside of that Press the top of this tongue so that I can cut the kerf a little wider at the top so I have a tapered kerf and it's not just all the same thickness. That'll help get better compression and fit with this wedge as we drive it in. Um, Now you should be able to see it. It's not drastic, but it's definitely wider and more tapered than it was before. So that'll help us get a little bit better compression with that one. thing I'm going to do before I get that on there is measure when my wedge is going to be at full depth. That's good. Now, I'm going to get you set up at a different uh, different camera angle, and we're going to drive this wedge in. Drive these in slowly. We're not bottomed out yet. We've still got three quarters of an inch, maybe a little more to go. Um, we are getting good compression almost all the way around in the eye. There's a little bit on the back corner here. Um, it still hasn't filled out, but 
the top side of this eye wasn't perfect which you have for you so that might be just a little bit of a gap um, keep driving it see if we can get get any more of that room to close up seems like i've kind of stopped making progress just to be sure of that i'm just going to draw a little bit of line where that tongue is in contact with that wedge So as I'm hitting it some more, see if it uh, if that line does disappear underneath that tongue. see we've got good compression all the way around a little bit of a gap there but not bad I honestly think that's probably where the, uh, the eyes just chamfered a little wider there so I left this proud um, I'm gonna take this down a bit more with the files and rasp and also uh, dome it over a little bit in all the directions I think that Gives it a nice look. Yeah, I'll get the top of the bench cleaned up and uh, oil this up. So now that we're all cleaned up, get some some boiled linseed oil on it. Well, the project's all done. Um, I just still need to sharpen it up and make a mask for it, but I don't think I'm going to record any of that. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with how it came out. Obviously, it's handmade, so it's not perfect, but I think it's a 
pretty close duplicate of the, the other one that I made. We'll bring in for a little closer look. I think they make a nice matching set. If you stuck it through this far, thank you for taking a look at the videos. I appreciate it, and hopefully there will be more to come.